everyone, my name is Melissa Bender. I'm joined today by my son, Maverick Bender. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about diastasis recti, which is abdominal separation. So if you guys follow me on social media, you know I'm about to start a new six week workout challenge that will be starting this Sunday. Um, so I don't have an abdominal separation, so I'm gonna be incorporating a lot of different core exercises. If you do have an abdominal separation, then some of the exercises I'm going to include will not be appropriate for you. So I wanted to make a video showing what is safe, what is not, how to check for a diastasis, um, and some exercises you could do to help pull it back together if you do have one. So if that is the case, I want you to do these exercises um, in place of the different core exercises. And as I go through the challenge, I will post links to this and written directions of what to do instead of the exercises in the video of the day. So that will all be available on my website, benderfitness.com. Um, first things first, do you have an abdominal separation? You can have it from pregnancy, especially if you've had multiple pregnancies, um, significant weight gain. If you have a lot of uh, fat in the midsection, it can cause increased intra-abdominal pressure, which can cause your abs to separate. So basically what happens is you have the rectus abdominis, which is the six pack abs. They run straight up and down your belly and they are responsible for trunk flexion. <coughs> hi baby boy. <laughs> he wanted to say hi too. Um, so in diastasis, what happens is instead of those two muscles being really close together or almost touching down the midline of your stomach, they separate. Now what's in between there is connective tissue. It's called the linea alba and it goes from being a nice dense tissue that's help holding everything close together to getting really thinned out as things separate. Usually the larger the separation, the thinner that connective tissue is, although it can vary. But um, so uh, you want to get everything pulled back in together. So that's going to take some different muscles. The transverse abs I talk about a lot in my videos. They run horizontally across your belly. So what they do is they act like a girdle. And interestingly, those muscles um, they don't pull bone, which is what most muscles do. They just act to compress the abdomen. So we want to strengthen those muscles back up so that they are pulling everything nice and close and back in together. So I'm gonna show you some exercises to do that. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to check for an abdominal separation. So you're gonna lay down, so lay on your side, roll to your back. <clears throat> um, legs can extend in front of you. What you're gonna do is you can keep one hand either on the floor next to your thigh or behind your head, you're not pulling your head up, it would just be for support. Fingertips are gonna go slightly above your belly button with your palm facing you. And what you want to do is you're gonna lift your head gently and you're going to move your rib cage slightly toward your hip bones. So just a small movement. And when you do that, you're gonna use your belly, your fingers, to see how far apart you can feel, if at all, the abdominal muscles being. So you might have no separation, which is basically two fingertips or smaller, like one and a half fingers would be normal. If you have more than two, then you have some degree of separation. So you can check that right near your belly, up higher and down lower. Typically the weakest spot is right near your belly. Um, but some people find that they do have a high separation or a low separation or a separation all the way up and down, down the abdomen. So that will tell you um, how, how much separation you have. So what to do, if you have a really significant separation, I'm going to encourage you to talk to your doctor. So significant to me is four plus fingers. So if you have that much width in between your muscles, I would say, Talk to your doctor, see if you can get a script for a physical or an occupational therapist, someone who specializes in either pelvic floor dysfunction and or abdominal separation because you might need a more intensive program. You might need some different modalities to help you um, along with a specialized exercise program. 
if it is smaller than that. And at any stage, you can help close it up. And it doesn't matter if you've had a separation for years, if you had your baby 10 years ago and you've just always had the mummy tummy, um, and you realize now that this is what the problem is, you can close it up. Or if you're a brand new mom and you're finding it, do not start these exercises until you are at least six weeks postpartum. Your body will not be ready. So let that everything heal up. The other thing is the hormone relaxin is gonna still be in your body for quite some time after your delivery. So you have to be really conscientious about the type of movements that you're doing. Exercises you want to avoid when you have an abdominal separation are exercises that have trunk flexion. So again, this the classic sit-up. Anything that has you really arching your back and really stretching out those muscles, like a back bend or using a stability ball and stretching out over it, and deep twists. So um, things like a rotated triangle pose where you're rotating your entire body to one side or the other, and especially if you're extending one arm as you do it, um, those can actually pull the muscles apart instead of pushing them together. And you want to develop a full core strength. So first, you wanna work those deep transverse abs, pull everything together this way. You also want to work your glutes and your back because those are going to support proper core alignment and getting everything realigned and strengthened in the front and then we're gonna work the obliques as well. So, progress yourself. Here are the exercises. If you have questions, comment below. If you have um, suggestions, things that have worked for you or things that you've tried, or maybe even warnings about an exercise you tried that you found out was not safe, post it in the comments below. We like to hear, this is interactive. As I said, I've done a lot of research into this but sometimes the lived experience might be a little bit different than the research. Okay, here are the exercises. Okay, we're ready to start the exercises. So first exercise we're gonna do, the first four exercises are a progression. So I want you to try exercise number one. Once you can do 20 reps per leg, you can move on to the next exercise and so forth and so on for the first four. You might only be able to start with five today. Form is important. If you are not using proper form, you're not getting the benefit of the exercise. So for the first exercise, we're gonna do heel slides. So you're gonna lay on your back. <laughs> Let me move the cat a little bit because I don't even know if you can see me. There you go, Gambit. Okay. Lay on your back, engage your core. What that means is you're gonna pull your belly button in toward your spine, back is flat on the floor. Um, you want to be able to do this while still breathing. So it's not just a push out all your air and pull it in. As you can see, my core is pulled in tight toward the floor, but I'm still able to breathe into my diaphragm. So what you're gonna do here is bring both heels close to your butt and one at a time, you're going to keep your core engaged, keep the back pressing into the floor, slide your heel out as low as you can keep it to the floor, and bring it back in. So you should feel that working in your abdomen. Same thing on the other side. And inhale in. Exhale, extend. Inhale in. That's two, so each side to right and left equals one rep. Three. Core stays tight. If you can't keep it engaged, it's time to stop. Four. Five. So we're building all the way up to 20. Six. That was seven. Eight. Really focus on keeping that heel low, you'll feel it more. Nine. Pull that belly in. Ten. Eleven. 
11. Twelve. Pull that belly in. I have to remind myself to. <laughs> Thirteen. Keep that heel low as you bring it in and out. Fourteen. Fifteen. Only five more. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. And twenty. So the next progression is a tabletop heel slide. So once you are able to comfortably do 20 of that first exercise, the heel slides, with your core engaged, feeling everything working, no arched back, no pain or discomfort, you can move on to this next exercise. So it's very similar, but we're gonna start out with our knee in that tabletop position. So pretend you could put a plate on it, your shin should be parallel to the floor. And from there, this leg stays where it is. You are going to extend, and bring it back in and up, and then onto the other leg. So tabletop position, core engaged, exhale, bring it back up. That was one rep. And again, building up to 20 before you're gonna to progress to the next exercise. So if you could do these first two exercises, great, that's gonna be the start of your program. If you're on exercise number one, that's okay, you're gonna get here. This is three. Pull that belly in, exhale every time you extend. Inhale, four. And sometimes I like to place my hands on my belly just to make sure I can feel that engagement happening. Five. Six. And you can slow down the movement if you need to to feel it. Seven. Eight. Job. Check that your abs are engaged. Back is pressing into the floor. 11. 12. 13. You don't have to exaggerate your breath as much as I am. I'm kind of doing that to remind you guys of where you should be breathing. That exhale. Inhale. Uh, I lost count. I think that was 15. 16. 17. Oh, 16 and a half. <laughs> 17, 18, two more, 19, 
19. Twenty. Okay, good job. So again, this third exercise is a progression. So we're going to do that tabletop position, but we're going to use both feet now, and we're going to do a heel tap. So core is tight. Pull the belly button in toward the floor. Make sure you can still breathe. But that belly button should always be pressing toward your back. We're going to bring both knees up into a tabletop position. So you should automatically feel a little bit more core engagement as soon as you lift both knees up. And then we are going to keep the core engaged, exhale, tap the heel or tap the toe. Two, and again, if your back starts to arch up, it's too much for you. You have to be able to keep the core engaged, back pressing down. Three, Four, again, building our way up to 20. Five, six, seven, fold the core toward the back of the floor. Eight, nine, 10, 11, pull that belly in, 12, 13, 14, 15, pull the belly in again, just a few more left. 16, 17, 18, breathe, 19, 20. <clears throat> okay, fourth one, again a progression. If you can't do the first three exercises, don't even try this one. Once you can do 20 reps each of exercises one, two, and three, you can try this exercise. It is a double leg lower. So again, pull that core in, belly button toward the floor, make sure you can still breathe, hands can stay at your side. We're gonna lift both legs up directly over our hips, and then we are going to drop them down toward the floor as low as you can without your back lifting. So if you can go down here, but your back arches up off the floor too far, it's a progression. So lower, and again, um, you wanna make sure that when you do this exercise in particular, well, any exercise, but this one will really activate it. You're not having a bulge in your belly. So if you're not pressing your belly out, you're still pulling it in. If you can't keep the belly button pressing toward the floor, don't try this one. If you get a ridge or like a mohawk in the center of your belly, you're not ready for this exercise. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, and you can put a hand on just to make sure you're not bulging out. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, almost done, 18, 19, 20. Okay, bend the knees and bring it back down. Um, so the next exercise is a transverse ab squeeze. So we've been practicing this during each exercise, but I also like to do it as an isolation exercise. Um, you don't need any progression to do this one. You can do it every day if you want. So relax your belly. 
And then I want you to practice that squeeze. So squeeze everything in and down as far as you can. Keep yourself breathing. And then do it, try and do it for five breaths. Relax. So you can build it all the way up to 20 or 30 seconds. Um, and this is even one you can do as you're driving your car, if you're sitting at a desk working. It's a great way to engage those transverse abs and start building strength again. So if you find that you have trouble even holding it for a few seconds, then that's a really good place to start building from. So let's go up to 10 breaths. Keep that belly pressing down. That's breath seven for me. And 10. We're going to do it one more time for 20 breaths. And again, this is something that I do sometimes when I'm sitting at a red light in my car. I'll just try and keep that engagement for the whole red light. Okay, breathe. Pull those abs in, and we're going to do 20 breaths. Keeping that squeeze. That's seven. Keep breathing. Check that you're still pressing toward the floor. That's 15, five more breaths. It might feel like you're not doing much with this exercise, but you really are. Okay, relax. The next exercise is gonna be a pelvic tilt. Again, you can do this one daily. There's no buildup for it. The trick is, you could do this, I've demonstrated it before while I was pregnant against a wall. You can do this sitting in a chair or laying on your back, which I think is probably the easiest way to do it. Um, you're going to tilt your hips toward your rib cage, but the secret is don't squeeze the glutes. So it's not a glute squeeze like I'm demonstrating right now. Um, glutes stay nice and loose and relaxed, and you're going to use your lower abdominal muscles. See, my, my butt is relaxed to bring the hip bones toward the rib cage. Back stays flat on the floor. So you're gonna tilt, squeeze those muscles, and then relax. Tilt, and relax. Again, try and make sure you're not using no glutes. <laughs> tilt, and relax. Try and feel and picture the muscle engagement as you go. That was three. Four, really bring those hip bones toward those ribs, five, six, and again, keeping those transverse abs working and engaged, seven, eight, use the ab muscles, not the butt, nine, hi buddy, ten, 11, 12, it's okay bud, 13, 14, remember the abs, 15, 16, it's okay baby, 17, 
17, 18, 19, use those belly muscles. Last one, 20. The next exercise is a pelvic bridge. I want to make sure I'm not stepping on the cat's tail for this one. Um, bring your heels close to your butt. Now part of keeping your abdomen strong is having a good support system. So you also have to work your back and your glutes. So exercises like squats and bridges become really important to helping you maintain perfect alignment during exercises and getting your core strength overall back. Um, because part of what happens is your muscles stretch too far and your alignment becomes really skewed. So next we're going to do a pelvic bridge. So heels press into the floor. You're going to peel your hips up. Again, tilting those hips toward the rib cage and this time letting your glutes activate at the same time. So you're going to do 20, up to 20 of those. Three. And again, activate that core to pull the hips toward your rib cage as you squeeze the glutes. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. Uh, oh, and that, that's another thing. I think I might have mentioned it earlier, but when you get up from laying down, whether it's in bed on the floor during an exercise, you should always roll onto your side and push up to avoid this strain on your abs. The next exercise is going to be a reverse plank. So I have my timer here somewhere. I think the cat might be on it. Oh, maybe I moved it. So what you wanna do is build your reverse plank up to 60 seconds. So heels press into the floor, hands directly below your shoulder, core engaged always. And we are going to lift up into a straight line. So you can either look toward your feet or out behind you, pull those abs in, keep the hips in alignment with the heels and the shoulders. So don't sag, don't over arch, just a nice straight line. Again, making sure you can breathe during the exercise. So I don't have my timer, I'm estimating we did about 15 seconds so far. Keep breathing. We're at about 30. Breathe, core tight. About 10 more seconds. Good job. So you could actually use a timer to make sure you're on because I was estimating. Okay guys, so those are the exercises I'm gonna show you today. Um, as I mentioned, you want to build up to be able to do all of these comfortably. Keep checking yourself for the ab separation. You should notice hopefully two things changing. One, that gap slowly coming in closer, so it's less finger widths apart. And the other thing you should notice is the density. So even if you have a separation, you can go from having a really deep separation where when you push in it's really soft to it feeling more firm and more connected. So that's a sign that that connective tissue is firming up and you're having better core control, core strength, um, and better strength of your connective tissue. Uh, a common question that I get is, when can I start progressing to regular ab exercises? So these are regular ab exercises. Um, just because you're not 
physically moving as much doesn't mean you're not engaging the abs just as much. These are really deep muscles, um, so you're still getting a great workout. You should not progress to standard planks, um, crunches, anything, until you are able to engage your core and keep it engaged the entire time. And for some people, they might not be appropriate exercises, again, depending on how significant your separation is. So if you have a five finger or more separation, you're probably not gonna be safe to do planks again or crunches because it can just exacerbate it, make it worse, um, or take away some of the progress that you've made. If you do have a really significant separation, I encourage you to do two things. I encourage you to go see your doctor and ask for um, a prescription to see a physical therapist or an occupational therapist, someone who is familiar with abdominal separation and exercises because they also have some techniques that can help you to reactivate those muscles and to check to see if you're even activating your transverse abdominal muscles. Um, and then the other thing, because transverse, or because the separation is linked with pelvic floor dysfunction, it would be really beneficial to you to also look into talking to a therapist who is certified in pelvic floor techniques. So again, that could be, depending on where you are in the world, it could be a physiotherapist, a physical therapist, or an occupational therapist. Um, they can all be certified. And the final thing I wanted to mention is splinting. You might see programs that do a lot of splinted exercises. So for example, mini crunches where you use a towel or your hands to pull your abs in together. I don't do those exercises uh, because I couldn't find scientific research to support it. So I did, to, to find these exercises and pick good exercises for you, I looked at a lot of peer-reviewed scientific studies to see what was effective, what was not. Um, from what I could find, from the evidence-based literature that's out there right now, splinting didn't help you to increase your strength at all. In fact, for some people it could actually be detrimental because they were using a device to hold in their abs and they weren't learning to activate those muscles again. Um, that said, if using your hands reminds you to pull in your core, then that's okay. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention was splinting. A lot of programs use splinting and there are some good programs out there that have had nice results, um, scientifically speaking, with splinting um, as one of their methods. So the main method should always be exercise, but some people will use uh, like a belly binder to help pull everything in. Again, the literature didn't really support that. Um, it didn't show that splinting alone did anything really for you, except maybe when you're first pregnant to shrink you back a little bit faster, but it was something that would happen on its own anyway. As far as closing the separation, I couldn't find anything to support it. So that doesn't mean it might not work for you, it might have worked for someone you know, everybody's different. Again, if using a splint reminds you to keep your posture upright and to engage those core muscles, then it probably will be helpful for you. If you're just using it to support your core muscles and keep them in tight, you're probably not going to get a lot of results with that. I hope you guys found this video informative, helpful. I hope the exercises help you. Um, you can do these daily or every other day. Um, and I hope you join me for the rest of the program. So again, everything that you need to know to do this program will be on my website, www.benderfitness.com, along with over 700 other free home workouts. Um, so not, not just postpartum joining me to get your strength back up, but throughout life. <laughs> okay, guys. I think it's time for me to stop talking, so I'll see you guys there. Bye.